George Soros is a multi-billionaire philanthropist and America's very own boogeyman. Despite donating over $32 billion to the Open Society Foundation, some people believe that George Soros is hiding behind a facade to keep his shameful past a secret. With a viral photo of an allegedly young George Soros wearing a specific uniform on the internet, there may be some crazy truths behind the billionaire's motives. If you wear this uniform today though, you'll probably end up in jail. Could it be that George Soros is not the philanthropist he claims to be? To fully understand the story, you need to pay close attention to his early beginnings. Few men truly shine after overcoming challenges. The son of Jewish parents, George Soros was born in Budapest just before the Second World War began. He was 13 years old when Hungary was invaded by the Nazis and because of his Jewish ancestry, he was prohibited from attending school. As a result of the brutal system that the Nazi Germans imposed over the continent, particularly in Eastern Europe, this meant that he was gravely at risk of losing his life. At the time of the Battle of Budapest, George was still alive and immigrated to England in 1947. He put forth a lot of effort to secure a spot in the famous London School of Economics by working as a waiter and a railway porter before landing a job in the Merchant Bank. Before relocating to New York City, Soros completed his Bachelor's of Science and PhD in Economics there. These early challenges served as the foundation for his success as a banker later on since they helped him recognize the importance of money from a young age. He started working as an arbitrage trader and earned enough money over the course of five years to return to England and pursue a career in philosophy. In New York City, he developed his groundbreaking theory of reflexivity. In 1970, he started his entrepreneurial career by founding Soros Fund Management. After quitting his position at First Eagle Funds, he founded the Qualcomm Fund, which went on to earn more than $5.5 billion, making it the most successful individual hedge fund in history. Over $40 billion has been produced since its beginning. And while his story may come across as a result of consistent hard work yielding results over time, his life is anything but typical. In fact, there are many shady aspects to it that suggest something more sinister is going on behind the scenes. In 2017, protesters who spoke out against corruption in Romania were allegedly paid by Soros. Recep Tayyip Erdogan, the president of Turkey, claimed in 2018 that Soros supported the activist Osman Kavala, who the president had blamed for the Gezi Park protest in 2013. He has so much money and he spends it in this way. In the same year, President Trump claimed that Soros was responsible for funding the posters shown during protests against Brett M. Kavanaugh's Supreme Court appointment. In an interview on Wednesday, Trump said that rumors circulate that Soros and other individuals are funding Antifa or anti-fascist protesters. In Central and Eastern Europe, Open Society does support anti-corruption groups and it did support one of the Kavanaugh protesters' associated organizations. Open Society recently declared a $220 million investment in organizations promoting racial fairness. However, there is a difference between George Soros pays for and organizes protests and George Soros' charitable foundation supports organizations that employ people who are part of protests. Though there are undoubtedly people all over the world who attend protests and work for organizations that have received funding from open society who are not being paid to do so. By capitalizing on the anti-Semitic stereotype that Jews control society, saying they are deprived protesters who are out in the streets over legitimate complaints like police brutality and corruption of their agency. Soros made $1.5 billion in just a single month by betting the British pound and several other European currencies were priced too richly against the German Deutschmark. Britain's position within the ERM, a kind of precursor to the euro in which each currency could only become so strong or so weak, was because of the British and German economic conditions during the two years that Britain was in the band, essentially untenable. Soros and his colleagues understood that the pound could only rise so much and as a result, they could only lose so much money by shorting it. There was no telling how far the pound may fall if they were right in their prediction. They were correct and the British pound eventually collapsed out of the ERM. Although Soros was not the only investor to wager against the pound, it is his fund that is thought to have earned a $1 billion profit. 
Although no banks were destroyed, some argue that Black Wednesday gave way to White Wednesday since Britain went on to improve its economy, and Soros and his associates did play a significant part in driving the pound out of the ERM. Now, let's talk about the most controversial thing about George Soros, his connection to the Nazis. The most repulsive Soros rumor is this one. In a 1998 60-minute segment, the interviewer Steve Croft questioned Soros about any guilt he might have felt as a survivor of the Holocaust because, as hundreds of thousands of Jews were being shipped off to Nazi death camps, a 13-year-old George Soros accompanied his phony godfather on his rounds, confiscating property from the Jews. Soros claims in an interview that he was simply brought along and did not take part in the confiscation. Roseanne Barr and other supporters of this conspiracy theory, however, have tweeted that Soros was a Nazi who handed over other Jews to be killed. Social media users claim that a photo of a young man wearing a Nazi costume was Soros himself. On the photo it says, I give you George Soros, an SS in the National Socialist German Workers Party. He served under Adolf Hitler and Heinrich Himmler. He said it was the best time of his life. The destruction and agony around him was euphoric to him. This man was making the policy with Hillary Clinton, and some of you think that Trump is dangerous. While this may sound like such a huge stretch, Soros did help fund Clinton's campaign. The largest super PAC supporting Hillary Clinton's presidential campaign received a $6 million donation from George Soros in December, re-establishing the billionaire financier as one of the biggest contributors to American politics. The large gift puts the Hungarian-born investors' total 2015 donations to pro-Clinton organizations at $8 million. So, was Soros a Nazi collaborator? Well, George's father had previously changed the family's last name from Schwartz to Soros so as to be less obviously Jewish in an increasingly anti-Semitic Budapest and disguised himself as a Christian during the Second World War. His father secured identification documents for both his family and others. When a Jewish person's home was being inventoried, the man with whom young Soros was hiding out once brought him along. But Soros was not implicated in the confiscation of Jewish things, Soros pointed out. As a student, Soros was assigned to perform tasks at the Judenrats, a body of Jews that the Nazis forced to carry out their orders, but he did not round up Jews. In reality, according to Soros' recollection, his father advised him against telling the people on the list to go when he was given instructions to tell them to report to a site from which they would be deported. So was it George Soros in the photo? A reverse image search reveals that the person in this picture is Oscar Groening, a bookkeeper and accountant at the Auschwitz-Birkenau concentration camp. The Washington Post here and the New York Times here both published articles with the image. Groening passed away in 2018, he was born in 1921, he joined the Waffen-SS as a volunteer and started working in Auschwitz in 1942. August 1930 saw the birth of George Soros. Soros would have been 12 when the man in the picture enlisted in the SS and 9 when the Second World War began. Even if this was taken in the final year of the war, which Routers was unable to corroborate, Soros would have been 14 or 15 years old. Boys had to be 17 years or older to enlist in the military in 1943. Throughout the war, Soros and his family, who were Hungarian Jews, stayed in Budapest using fictitious identification documents to conceal their heritage. At the age of 17, Soros relocated to London to pursue his studies in 1947. When Soros turned 17 years old, Nazi Germany had already fallen. Soros could not have been a member of the Nazi party, which existed from 1920 to 1945. Even so, there are thousands of people from all over the world who still believe this theory to be true. Whether George Soros was telling the truth about his past or not, there's no solid evidence to back up this theory. So for now, we'll just have to take his word for it. Early in the new millennium, a series of uprisings known as the Color Revolution produced new administrations in Eastern Europe. Conspiracy theories and fringe websites have charged Soros with being the driving force behind revolutions abroad and even attempting to orchestrate one in the United States. The election campaign of Philadelphia District Attorney Larry Krasner was supported by Soros, and Tucker Carlson claimed that this amounted to hijacking and remaking American democracy. The Washington Times published a story with the headline, George Soros, 89, is still on a mission to destroy America. 
Simply put, Soros is a significant political donor who entered the fray in 2004 by giving $27 million to organizations working to unseat President George W. Bush. Additionally, he has backed progressive candidates for district attorneys and is spending millions to stop Trump. But there is a distinction between planning a revolution and making political donations. At least that's what they're going with for now. It's clear that millions have their eyes set on George Soros. Whether he has something up his sleeve or not, there's no evidence to back it up that we know of. What we do know about Soros is that he's called by Forbes the most generous donor, giving away 64% of his original fortune. Anything fishy written about him is buried under thousands of positive news articles on Google. I leave you with what a YouTube commentator said in a George Soros video. Best trick the devil ever played. He convinced everyone that he did not exist. But what do you think? Is Soros hiding something or are these just conspiracy theories? Let us know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, remember to hit the like button. For more videos like this one, click on the subscribe button and we'll see you in the next video.